My earliest experience with modding is actually uh, with Deus Ex and the Nameless Mod. It's been going for seven years now. I had wanted to do some sort of like fan fiction with modding and include the people from the Planet Deus Ex forums as sort of uh, just a little fun thing to do. And uh, after starting on that, everyone wanted to be involved and we've been working on it for the last seven years. So that's uh, basically been the total sum of my modding career. I sort of wanted to do my own thing, so I started to do a little map that featured some of the, the members, and it basically, from that point, grew a bit out of control. As I started reading more tutorials, and, and there was some really great documentation in the Deus Ex community about what you could do, it was really kind of inspiring to see what you could do as you followed these tutorials through. As more people became interested and joined, uh, it just kept growing from there. And the more we did, the more excited we got about everything, and uh, it just kind of ballooned from there. You is almost always someone who thinks they're cool, but obviously I didn't not. really even make a conscious choice. It was just I discovered modding with Deus Ex. That's what I started using, so that's the engine that we that we used and I mean it really turned out quite well because the kind of game that we wanted to make uh, included well all the RPG elements from Deus Ex that uh, the engine is so good at so it, it really ended up working out well we kind of shaped the mod to to match Deus Ex which works really well with the engine today is a great day. I had I'd written a small little story that really made no sense at the beginning and for the first maybe two years, we did uh, basically headless chicken development, where we all ran around in circles, banging into walls and tripping over each other and really getting nothing done. Uh, and then uh, Jonas rewrote the story, just cleaned it up, made it make a lot more sense. And uh, from there, uh, it was probably refined, like major refinements, at least twice more before we got what we have now. And, and it's something that we're really happy with, something that has uh, a lot of depth to it and f a massive amount of freedom for the player. And just, uh, it, it's much more detailed than anything that we had imagined when we started out. And uh, we're definitely very happy with it. Run, Forrest! No! In the first years, uh, it was it was distributed probably evenly between myself and Jonas did uh, a lot of the planning and a lot of the he did the writing and I, I did some mapping and nowadays um, Jonas I would say is definitely doing the bulk of the work he's sort of become the the linchpin in the project where he because he wrote the story and he wrote all the conversations in the conversation editor he basically knows exactly where everything is and how it fits in. Uh, so a lot of the bug fixing and everything um, currently is falling to him. I primarily do team management, which is, uh, as you'll find out, and as you know if you work on a mod, is a massive part of it, especially with a team as large as we have. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to make sure everybody is pointing in the same direction and actually getting things done. We've really been lucky in that we've had the core sort of four to six people on the team and I mean without them uh, the whole thing would have fallen apart uh, a long time ago. <laughs> Myself, I've used a lot of uh, 3D Studio Max which well I've, I've used it for all the modeling that I've done. Uh, another one of our modelers uses I believe it's Cinema 4D and he's done almost all of our models. Yeah, it must be really good because he turns out a lot of good stuff. Uh, we've used a lot of Gold Wave for audio editing with the massive amounts of uh, voice acting that we have. You really have to have something good and uh, Gold Wave really makes everything very easy. Of course, uh, Photoshop has been a huge one for all our textures and we have uh, a lot of custom textures. Our, I use it, uh, Jonas uses it, anyone that does any uh, of our texture work, especially our graphics artists use a lot of Photoshop. And then I guess the other major software that we use if, uh, is SVN software version control for for all our files. It's just something that we discovered um, while well, one of our coders turned us on to it maybe two years ago. 
and it's just absolutely invaluable for distributing your content to all your team members to ensure that you're all working on the same files. You can easily update them. You can comment all your changes. SVN has, I'd say, saved us at least six months of development time. Just a single moderator is missing. You think the other two could handle it, right? One of the major challenges is the voice acting, um, which has been no end of trouble. Another major one has been storyline sort of cohesion. Uh, when we started, we really had no idea what we were doing, so uh, everything was kind of just thrown together, and we we really didn't know if it would work or not. We just kind of assumed that it would work, which is why the story has been rewritten so many times. And with the way we have the storylines worked out, there's two parallel and completely unique storylines, and making them actually operate properly with uh, all the different choices that the player can make and having the game respond logically has been a massive challenge. It's something that beta testing has uh, really been helping to smooth out, but we never really expected the amount of... Uh, the amount of problems that that introduced into the project. The other major challenge would just be, as it is with most mods, getting people to do, to reliably do work. I think I'd rather kill you and cash in from Scarra King. We, we started compiling alpha builds, which were not really alpha builds, <laughs> probably two years ago, which would include the first level, and you know, I just it kept the team motivated and it, it's fun to be able to download something and actually install it and then play it. Um, we started real beta testing in July, July I believe. We have about 10 beta testers right now, 10, I think it's around 10. We had one group of beta testers first and they ran through the game and discovered really massive, massive bugs and a lot of them. So <laughs> we fixed those and then we would just release, so that was beta 1, and then we released uh, beta 1.5, and they did a bit more testing, and now we're at beta 2, and we've let on the second round of beta testers. We use a, I think it's PHP bug tracker. I think we have over a thousand bugs in the system, and most of them are fixed, but it's just really nice to be able to keep track of them, take them off, you can sort them by severity, so fix the most uh, most problematic bugs. Uh, our betas are actually not open to the public. With a single player mod, we're going for one massive, highly polished release, and uh, I, I think it's going to work quite well that way. We've everyone's had to wait for a long time, but it's going to be worth it. Status report what we've done is we've finally, and most mods don't like to do this. We don't like. We haven't liked to do it because we've uh, been wrong before, but. With, this, with the state of the project, where it is, we finally set a release date, so it's going to be released on January 24th, 2009, which is about <laughs> two years later than we actually thought that we would end up releasing it. Time to think outside the box, Tess John. <laughs> if, if you want to make a mod, definitely what we've learned is planning is key. You have to plan every detail that you can. If you have to spend six months on planning, it's worth it. And... Once you've done that planning, don't change it. If you can, keep your team small. Uh, if you can't, get used to managing people because that is what you're going to be doing. Make your milestone something that will motivate your team. We've we've had a lot. Like that's why we have been doing periodic builds, even from the very earliest ridiculously small alphas. It's just something that you give your team a build and they can install it and see where everything is going. It's uh, it's really something that will increase the productivity of your team, I think. You don't think the Great Lama would waste the garden talents of us two on nothing, do you? I guess you're right. But to be honest though, I'm not really sure I believe in the Great Lama. I'm mostly here to beat up those pansy goat worshippers.